Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and in this short video, I am going to walk you through one of the most awesome tools of ever if you are a WebRTC developer. You may not know it even exists, you may have been there before and, and just been totally overwhelmed by it, but it is a built-in Chrome tool. And, it, and if you're not a Chrome person, you'll have to either switch for your WebRTC development or you'll have to wait until your, your browser of choice comes along with something like this. But uh, in, in Chrome, you go to chrome colon slash slash WebRTC dash internals, and it will bring you to a page like this. Let me get a, a connection open over here. This is this is actually a MediaSoup app. Uh, I'm working on a course, uh, and you can you can stay tuned for more uh, details on that. But MediaSoup uses the exact same architecture, so they are exactly the same in our tool. Let me get the feed started, get the connection going. Hop back over here to WebRTC internals. So we've got a, a, an extra tab now. Leftover tabs will get dropped, so you'll see that happen. If you've got a ton here, that means that maybe you've got a, a browser that, that needs a little bit of cleanup. A lot of times the easiest way to get rid of them is to just close the, the offending tab. But what do we have here? What Chrome is offering us is a central hub for everything WebRTC related that's going on inside of Chrome. The very first tab uh, this will always be here, I think, whether whether you've got one open or not, but it's every call that has, has been made to get user media or get display media, and they, they persist for a long time. Uh, it, it takes quite a while before the cache breaks, but it, it is who or where I guess it was called from, what type of call it was, was it get user media or get display media, and then various constraints and information about that particular request. So this is pretty straightforward. It, it makes makes sense, hopefully. There will be one of these for every RTC peer connection that this computer has open. And, and again, sometimes you'll have a bunch that are closed from, from doing development. But all the stuff that is here, scrolling down a little bit, we'll look at all of this. And we won't be able to cover it all in detail because there's simply too much there. A lot of these individual topics are going to be big enough that they could justify their own video. If there's a particular topic that you're interested in, you can comment on it and, it, and if there are enough requests, I can do another video on it. But everything here, you can get by logging in the console. The problem with that is that it clogs up your code base and it clogs up your console. I certainly have had my share of, of maybe hundreds of lines that I'm trying to scroll through to find out where the connection state changed or what was the ICE candidate status at this particular point. Everything in here is coming from RTC peer connection as you'll see in just a second. There's already a nice UI so you don't have to put this together every time. It is a fantastic tool that you should get a lot of good mileage out of. Uh, up at the very top, if you want to just grab all of the JSON that is making up all of this stuff, you can click on download uh, the internals dump it can be useful if you, you need to parse it or look through it closer. There's a couple diagnostic tools here. You can look at these if you would like to. This is gonna be for audio issues. This will be for network issues. These first few lines though, there's so much useful information here just at a glance. At the top, this is the server that the RTC peer connection has connected to, and this is the ICE server information. Now, in my app, I'm not using any stun servers, so I don't have any here at the moment, but all of the config data is already here. This part, the ICE connection state, okay, if that looks familiar, I have opened up the MDN docs for the ICE connection state change event. This event is sent to the RTC peer connection object every time the ICE connection state changes during the negotiation process. Scrolling down a little bit, the options are new, checking, connected, completed. If we come back over, connection state, come back over to MDN, Scroll up just a little bit. That's another event here, connection state change. Pretty much all the same stuff. Anytime a new track has been added to the RTC RTP receiver, which is part of the connection, it goes through this, new connecting, connected, disconnected, failed, or closed. Come back over, there's signaling state. If we scroll down a hair, there's signaling state change. You can look through this uh, at the, the different options that it has and so on. What we have here is at a very brief glance, you can see this went from new to checking to connected. If you scroll down past all of these, these drop-down boxes and look for that particular event, ICE connection state change right here, it is at checking. That's why it says checking right there. If we keep looking for it, it's right there. We've got connected. 
that's why it's connected. So it shows the process that we went through. And if you want to see when that happened, it will show you in this event log here. Same thing for the connection state. If you look for that particular event, let me close that. Here's the connection state change. It shows connecting right below that. We've got connected. That's why these three are here. The signaling state, you can go look at that. But again, we've got a very quick glance at what the process has been. Below that, we have the ICE candidate pair that is being used. I'm on my local, and so it's just using my local IP address here along with the port number. If you open up the ICE candidate grid, this will show you all of the different ICE candidates that have succeeded, where it's coming from the port, the protocol that we are using. Over here, it keeps in real time the, the bytes that have been sent and received, various updates to the stun server so that it, it's maintaining good health and checking to make sure this is the best candidate that we've got and so on. Before we come down below here, I'll hop back over here so I can talk to you. In most WebRTC applications, one of two things has happened. You get lost in the connection process, whether it is the signaling process, something happened out of order, or whether it's the ICE candidate process, or whether the SDP isn't quite right, somehow the asynchronous, just chaos of all of that, you get lost in. This thing can help you rein in that chaos. The other thing that happens is there's some network problem. If all of your code is right, or if you pull down something that I made, or you've, you've guaranteed everything is, is correct according to the API, it's almost always going to be network related and making sure that you're actually able to get through, making sure that RTP packets are, are passing is really what everything comes down to. Briefly looking at everything that's in here. These are the stat tables, so this is going to show you lots of good stats. The bold ones are the ones I'm going to highlight here. The candidate pair, this will show you of the candidates that are currently uh, connected. You can, you can see the packets that are being sent, how many per second, how much has been received, a whole bunch of interesting RTP information. Under the remote candidate, it will just give you information about who this particular RTC peer connection is connected to on the remote. The local candidate, likewise, and then the outbound RTP is gonna be similar to what we saw up above there. All of the RTP packets that are going out, which is the, the network uh, traffic type that, that we use in WebRTC. Same thing for remote. Click through these and, and see what looks interesting or, or maybe what you already are aware of. The stat graphs uh, can be really nice. A candidate peer, just like up above, the one that we are currently using, it will give you all kinds of great network traffic information. Now, if you're not connected, this isn't going to be useful because they will all be totally flat. But as you click through these, you can get great information, again, all in one simple place. As I already said, all of the information we just looked at that's available there, you can console.log. But you are going to have a hard time making a UI that looks this good with this much information that is also going to have access to all of your WebRTC tabs and put it all in one place. When I found this and, and learned how to use it, it became one of the best WebRTC development days I had ever had. I hope you get some good use out of it. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.